Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are continuing our revisitation of the Game Engines by Programming Language series. So if you're looking for a game engine, but you wanted to use a specific programming language, I got you covered. So, so far, we have done Python again. I did the original one back in, I think, 2018, so I figure seven years later, time for a bit of an update. So if you are looking for a Python-based game engine, I got you covered. If you are looking for a Lua-based game engine, I got you covered. If you are looking for a C or C++-based game engine, hey... I've got you covered. And we're going to keep doing these. We've got C Sharp, obviously, in the future and a couple of other options. But today, what we are looking at is Hacks. Now, Hacks is one of those languages I've actually always found pretty interesting. Uh, it is a high-level language, uh, very comfortable syntax. If you've used, you know, C++ or Swift or anything else, this is what Hacks ultimately looks like. And the thing about Hacks is it compiles down to other programming languages. So it's incredibly cross-platform in its nature. It's got some very interesting features of its own. And one of the areas where Hacks has definitely been used quite a bit is in the world of game development. It's got some pretty high-profile users. At the same time, this is also where pretty much all of the action script or flash developers seem to have migrated to. So Hacks is a very cool game engine and there's a lot of fl uh, flash legacy here as we will see in just a bit. But Hacks is definitely being used for game development. Now one of the big studios out there is Motion Twins. So games that have been created using Hacks though, you're going to see some you've definitely recognized here. Uh, Northguard, Dead Cells, one of my favorite games to be honest. Papers, uh, Please, Evil Land, and so on. So there are a number of games uh, being built using the Hacks programming language and we're going to now look at some of the uh, frameworks and uh, game engines of Available. I'm going to focus mostly on stuff that is, um, you know, actively under development. Some of these things have been abandoned. That's one of the downsides in the Hacks ecosystem. But one of the more interesting ones is Heaps. Now, Heaps is behind a lot of those things we just looked at earlier on. So it can do 2D and 3D game accelerations, again, being used in things like Dead Cells, Evil Land, and so on. Uh, it is both a 2D and 3D game engine. It compiles cross-platform. It is easy to get started. It comes with a number of tools, including database based stuff in there as well. Heaps is actually comprised of several different other toolkits. There's H2D, which is for 2D displays, H3D, which is for rendering 3D models, HXD, which is the cross-platform classes and complete resource loading and management framework, and the HXSL uh, is the Hacks shader language. There is also something out there called Castle, which is a database system that you can use in your games that integrates nicely into Heaps as well. So in terms of the, the game engine slash framework that is being used to create the most high profile games for Hacks, it is definitely Heaps. So you probably want to start there if anywhere. Another one we've got here is Armory. Now Armory is a really interesting project. It is using the Hacks programming language, but it embeds it inside of Blender. Now the thing is, so you've got the Armory 3D game engine, but the developer seems to be focusing more on Armor Paint and Armor Lab these days. Now there is a development community behind Armory. Uh, so this is thought to be sort of like the Blender game engine given a new life, but being powered by Hacks. So you can develop your games directly inside of Blender, create your content inside of Blender, but script your game logic using the Hacks programming language. Again, the only bash I would have against Armory is the develop developer seems to be more working on it just so he could support Armor Paint, uh, which is his... Um, substance painter type application, but there is a community working to improve the Armory game engine. So if you want to go ahead and check that one out, uh, it is a very interesting project. Uh, then this is the first of those um, uh, refugees from the world of Flash game engines I think I talk about. Uh, two of the most popular Flash game engines have been ported over to and continue life in Hacks. The first one is Flixel. Now, Flixel is a complete game engine for doing all kinds of 2D game development. You see the type of games that have been created using Flixel. So if you're looking to create something like Newgrounds or Congregate style games, the basically the future of Flax games, Hacks Flixel is there. So you can see it's built on a couple of different things. You got OpenFL, uh, you've got Flixel, which was the um, Flash library originally. Uh, now you've got Hacks Flixel. So uh, an interesting one there. If you're interested, it is completely open source. It is under active development. And then another really popular one, I did this out of order, we have Hacks Punks. Now Hacks Punks, uh, Flash Punk was another very popular action script based 2D game engine. Uh, it just, this one doesn't seem to be getting as much going on. So that's the downside here. It hasn't been updated in quite a while. So if you had to choose between Hacks Flixel um, or Hacks Punk, I think you ultimately want to go with Hacks Flixel unless you are updating an existing Hacks Punk game. 
Now we've got another one here called Ceramic. And I gotta be honest, I actually don't really know much about Ceramic. It's interesting because there's not a lot of new developments in the world of hacks since I last did my video on it. We've definitely had improvements in certain areas, uh, but new, new game engines and frameworks, not that common. So one of the ones we have is Ceramic. This is under active development. Um, so you can compile your code to a number of different platforms. And interestingly enough, you can actually compile your code to Unity and then build your Unity game for whichever platforms you're interested in. That's a very interesting part about Ceramic. Uh, so uh, if you're interested, they do have documentation on why to get up and going, why you might want to choose Ceramic. Now, Ceramic is built on a number of different technologies or, or some of the other options out there. So these are the things that they worked on out there. There is Lux, but unfortunately Lux is toast and they switched over to Rent. It's, that's a weird project. I'm not going to really get into that. But if you're interested, Ceramic is one of those ones. I will probably check it out in more uh, detail at some point in time. Uh, it's, it's not actually... Um, a framework that I have any experience with at all. But you get an idea of what code looks like. Here is the code for dragging a quad around the screen. So you can see example of it right there. So the nice thing is there are a number of different uh, examples available. It is MIT licensed. It is actively developed and updated. So two weeks since the last uh, change over here, a decent sized community working on it. So Ceramic is one of the, the newer options out there for hacks. Again, I don't have a lot of personal experience with it. Uh, and then we've got, this is more of a low level thing. This is OpenFL. This is kind of like SDL or SFML or Allegro in scope. Um, for you working with hacks. Um, so this provided a lot of the things that Flash originally provided, uh, but you can then now develop uh, again uh, on various different platforms and because of the cross compiling nature of hacks can put it out to a number of different things but you think it does things like 2d and 3d graphics audio uh, playback uh, rich text formatting user input asset management so on and so forth so if you want to uh, you're going to see here games like papers please were ultimately built over top of this openfl is used in a number of the other technologies so if you want to build your own hacks framework uh, openfl is definitely one to be aware of another one we have this is lower level. Uh, so this is the native back end for hacks projects. This is called NME or the native media engine. Again, a low level framework for doing graphics work. Again, this is kind of like SDL. Things get a little blurry uh, with the separation of uh, details when it comes to hacks programming. And now another one, this one definitely is a little bit of a stretch to fit here because this is technically a a level editor. This is more like tiled. Um, if you're looking to create levels, uh, this is from the developer of Dead Cells. Um, and it's a, a full-blown level editing environment for creating games, but it uses hacks behind the scenes. Now, where I'm going to qualify this one in is this is also sort of more because it's kind of like you can see here, you can create entities and databases and spawn things in your world and you can extend it using hacks and so on. So you can look at this almost as an editor framework for creating your own games, again, built entirely in the hacks ecosystem. And as you can see here, works with another a number of game engines out there as well, but this is very much hack at the core. It's extensible using the Hacks programming language. So it's one of those things that you would like to be aware of. So LDTK, a very cool project out there. Now, another low level SDL type solution for Hacks is Caw. Now, this is even lower level than some of the things we talked about. So again, think SDL, but supercharged. It's based on the Hacks programming language and the graphics shader compiler. It can cross compile your code and optimize your assets for even the most obscure system. Ka is so portable, it can even run on top of other game engines and its generational graphics and audio API design gets the best out of every target supporting super fast 2D graphics, just as well as high-end 3D graphics. So if you're looking for something uh, at that um, lower level to build on top of, Ka is another option for you. And as you can see, it supported platforms quite a few. Although uh, the console code is not public, you need to be a registered developer to get access to that. This is the world of NDAs and everything else. So uh, Ka again, another low level option. And the neat thing here again is you can compile your Ka code to run on top of other game engines. Um, and then we've got one, which sadly, this is more of an obituary uh, because this seems to be abandoned, uh, which is a shame, uh, which is stencil because this is kind of like uh, a game builder type or game maker type uh, solution, but it used Ka as its extension language. Uh, it just doesn't seem like Stencil is being updated or anything's going on there. So if we go into like what's new, we're talking about two or three versions ago uh, for Mac OS. So I think this is a dead project, which is unfortunate because Stencil was very cool. Uh, and another thing to be aware of is you've got the Hacks Lib 
option out there. So Hackslib shows you all of the stuff that's available. So you're gonna find a ton of different things here. And I went through a lot of these looking for solutions. So you can think things like, um, you know, Flixel is in here. This is the uh, game category, by the way. But you're also gonna find a lot of things in here, like such as Away, Away 3D. And you think, oh, that sounds great. But then what you're gonna do is you can find out if you go to Away 3D, this is quite old quite outdated. So it's been a very long time since anyone actually updated it. So that's kind of one of the downsides. So the last published was five years ago for Away 3D, for example. But you can see here, there are a ton of frameworks and libraries. Some things like we just discussed, Ka is in here. I do wish that on this particular screen, they had last update, it would make it so much easier. But there are a ton of open source libraries for hacks. Again, we're in the gaming category here and we've got 150 there. Uh, so you see a variety of different options here as well. And then some of the things we talked about, for example, NME actually have their own category here. Uh, and then we got 3D libraries over here as well. So I will have that link available out there. Uh, and if you wish, you can actually use uh, hacks with Godot if you'd like. So some interesting framework stuff out there for hacks. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the uh, game engines for the hacks programming language. Let me know what you think. Did I miss any that are still being actively developed? If so, let me know and I will add them to the list. All right, I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.